in all the tribes, depending on how people count the tribes, because depending on how you count, there's more than 12 or, but anyway, we'll leave that for another day. Edomites. Who do one West, or I don't know if it's the majority of BHI, do they consider Edomites to be a, one certain group of people, or is it just mainly one West? Well, a lot of Hebrew Israelites believe that Edomites are essentially Europeans or Europe, people of European descent. Okay. That's, that, that, that's not, it's, I wish it was just one Westerners, but there's non one Westerners who believe that as well. Okay. Um, but a lot have a more, I guess you might say, traditional view. That European folks are Japhetic, that they're of Japheth. Um, I mean, the whole thing's kind of silly. You're going back, uh, you know, 4,000 years or so, uh, more than that. Yeah. And you're trying to, like, make a one-to-one -one correlation with a person now, with someone then, and all kinds of stuff. It's pretty wild. In relationship to when you talk about Japheth is what I was saying there. Yeah. Uh, but, yes, most would say Edom is basically America. Edomites are white people. And it's funny uh, on so many different levels, man. It is. Be it's crazy. It's a bit so bad. I mean, one thing is, have you ever thought about this? Have you ever seen where they like, sometimes will show a picture and they'll be like, uh, they'll show uh, everybody else's dark skin and they'll show like a little white kid and they'll be like, Jesus amongst the Egyptians hiding, you know, kind of <laughs> making fun of the idea of a white Jesus. And uh, they'll sometimes say, how could how could uh, crackers be the true Israelites? They can't survive out there in that sun. Sometimes they'll say stuff like that. They can't live out there in Israel. They'll die. And then they'll turn around and say, and Esau are the white people. Right. Uh, does everybody know where the descendants of Esau lived? They lived <laughs> in what's modern day Jordan and in southern Israel. Right. Guess what? It's pretty much the same climate. So yeah. they're out here on one hand saying they can't survive the climate, everyone. And, uh, you know, and then they turn around. And then they've got Edom living right there. And it's kind of right. funny. Everyone in the region is like dark skinned of right. the Middle East is all these dark skinned peoples, which is right. that part's true, right? That runs a, a gamut. Right. But dark when I say darker skin, meaning darker than what people think, if they think white people are the you know, they the people think of white. So when you say dark skin, but really it's brown skinned, whatever. Right. So you have brown skinned people in that region, and all of a sudden you go to the Transjordan area and you have the kingdom of Edom and a bunch of white people sitting there. And somehow they managed to make all the Europeans on the world today. Right. And then over here, if you're talking about one Westers, the kingdom of, of Moab and Ammon, the Japanese and Chinese. Yeah. <laughs> so they, there they are down there and this, just hanging out and they're not there today, you know, right. and all that, but they were there. And the, anyways, but go ahead, man. Yeah. It's, I saw one time and I know this part's not everybody, but they did a chart and like who's where, and they were talking about like the, the Caribbean islands. I'm like, what are you talking? Who, how did they get like, anyway, right. I, I, can't, I couldn't even, I couldn't even entertain um, <laughs> on that real quick vocab. Uh, Adrian has a question. What about the camps that say maybe Gentiles can be saved, but they will be saved only to serve Hebrew Israelites in the camp. Okay. So they can get in, but only as, servants of us yeah there's uh some of the hebrews like camps who again they think they're israelites and other nations are gentiles and uh there's varying degrees of this this is why i just say it's ethnic hierarchy right you know i just say it's ethnic hierarchy because even if a uh, hebrew israelite doesn't hold to the so-called hardcore slavery of the other nations in the kingdom uh, they all that I've ever seen have some form of a hierarchy in God's kingdom. And of course, it's really not God's kingdom. Uh, but they'll say things like, uh, well, they will um, willingly do these things for Israel because they'll see it as a way to serve God. Or they'll say, um, yeah, they'll be uh, beneath us, but there'll still be brothers and sisters. And it'll be like a husband and wife relationship where you know, the, the wife is, is not the leader and she's supposed to be submissive to the husband. But, uh, you know, that's the kind of relationship it'll be. Uh, this is the kind of things they say. I wouldn't say all this. Or they'll say it's not really like slaves. It's more like servants or butlers. So you'll sometimes <laughs> see guys say stuff like this, right? Yeah. And, um, and uh, it's interesting because uh, 
Who does Paul describe himself as a servant or a slave? Do lots of Jesus Christ. Right. James does the same thing. You just go down the list. Just talking about that. These guys are Peter's an under shepherd to the great shepherd. These these are guys who are who are, they understand their place as serving Christ. None of them talk about looking forward to a day when other people are going to serve them or wait on them hand and foot or make their coffee or bring them a falafel or something like that. That's not what's going on there. And, and the these only time sit around fantasizing about. <laughs> the only time I can halfway even remember, as you as you say, um, kind of figuring out who they can dominate, and Jesus shut it down immediately. Remember when Peter and, and John were talking on the road, who's going to be greatest in the kingdom? Yeah. So Jesus squashed. He showed how he felt about that type of idea pretty pretty clearly. Yeah, that is that's that's the Hebrew Israelites all day, honestly. And instead of their mother putting them up to it, you know. <laughs> it's uh it's uh you know their general or their their a uh, high their their uh their chief priest or something like that right yeah. and uh that's that's it you know what they they think and uh it's just it's sad because it's delusional but it's it's interesting because uh, I, I like to bring up this passage um check out <laughs> check out this this passage real quick here what Jesus says uh, we'll check this uh, this uh, this I feel like so uh, some of you forget about this. Here we go. Check this out. Matthew 20, 25. Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lorded over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. Right? So he's talking about Gentiles. And look what he says. It shall not be so among you. Whoever will be great among you must be your servant. And whoever will be first among you, must be your slave, the ESV says. KJV still has it as servant, but most translations put the second part there as slave. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to put it up for everyone real quick. Do we? Uh, do we? Do we see? And that's Matthew 20, uh, chapter 20, and starting uh, in verse 25, going to verse 27. So the uh, these guys again, what do they do? They're the way they act, especially the one Wester is on the corner when they literally will stand and they'll see someone go by and they'll be like, You're going into slavery. <laughs> they'll literally, you know, do that. They'll call people down. I've even seen them do it in some cases, like GMS with children. They'll be like, That little girl, you know, it's like, Yo, bro. I, I sometimes joke, I'm like, Man, you guys want children in slavery? They barely clean their own room. Like, what, what are they going to do <laughs> out here, you know? And so, and they got to kiss their feet with like I know everyone doesn't do that, but mm, but you see that they act again the way Jesus describes Gentiles, mm. lording authority, wanting servants and slaves, and yet Jesus says, "Oh, the greatest, he's the servant, mm. the 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 one who wants to be first, he's the slave." And then Jesus demonstrates it by talking about himself as a servant, and what's he do? Last supper. If I was Jesus, I don't even feel like it'd be wrong. I'd be like, yo, man, I got a lot on my mind. I know what's about to happen tonight and tomorrow. <laughs> if they, if they, you know, I just I just need to chill and just eat this last meal. You know, it's like, you know, Jesus is like, let me use some of my final hours of freedom <laughs> to wash these people's feet. Right. <laughs> and that's why Peter's like, no, because Peter's don't, this is like the job of a servant. Right. Right. Yeah, and uh, it appears Judas was still there among the twelve. So he he's was, like, yeah. "Wash Judas's feet too." Knowing, yeah, no Hebrew is alike that I've ever met of the one less variety is Christ like at all. Just honest, because they wish for the opposite things. This is something they talk about other people doing for them. The other day, a guy was uh, a Sakari guy. I was always making fun of K Dub for talking about serving his wife by washing her feet. He was making fun of that. It's like, bro. This is what Jesus did for his disciples. What what is there to make fun of? They literally make fun of Christ like characteristics, hmm. showing you where their allegiance is. And so that's why we need to pray for these folks, but also don't let them abuse the Bible in Jesus' name. Amen. Do not let them abuse the Bible in Jesus' name, y'all. Amen. Amen. That's a good note to end it. Um, man, bro, thank you. <laughs> this won't be the last time. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for coming on and and giving all of us a lesson or three and uh yeah appreciate y'all in the chat uh make sure to leave a comment make sure to like subscribe and share make sure to share it with a friend until next time
Peace.